Let me, let me pull up the story. It seems to be, it's just a weird story, but it's a belly of the beast, man. We got this story from the Daily Mail. Ben and Jerry's manager is accused of dousing mentally ill homeless person with a bucket of water because she was crying on the sidewalk outside of the store in San Francisco. I don't even want to play the video. Um, it's just a crying homeless person. It's terrible. Dude apparently comes out and splashes water on him. But there's, there's so much here. Obviously, there's like a culture, a uh, cancel culture outrage going on over this and people yeah. on social media are like, how dare you? But man, does this hit at the very serious problems of cities like San Francisco with representation like Nancy Pelosi. Granted, she's at the federal level, but still, this is her city. She doesn't seem to care about it. You've got the homeless crisis. You've got the drug crisis. You've got the failed policies. You've got human waste all over the streets. And then you've got people saying that California is five years ahead of the rest of the country. So you look at stories like this, <laughs> and it's like this Ben and Jerry's manager is just like a regular guy. Yeah. Is this Dousing. Ben and Jerry's like the ice cream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. The woke ice cream company. The yeah. woke ice cream company. That's right. The, the extremely politically correct woke ice cream company. What was, what was as that? As long as it's not homeless people. What right. was that really <laughs> awful flavor they had? It was woke and had like a weird thing in it. I can't remember what it was. I'll cinnamon. try and look. It had cinnamon in it. You hated no, it. No, no. What? I love yeah, cinnamon. I what are you talking you hated about? I that one. I yeah, absolutely weird. love cinnamon. I enjoyed it. That's that weird. weird. You are so wrong. <laughs> I, am, okay. I am offended that someone. Cinnamon bun ice cream. So good. You ever on a cinnamon stick before? No. That's pretty good. But you ever do the yeah. cinnamon challenge you guys ever do that no. you take a scoop of cinnamon and you put it in your mouth and oh, it's, it I don't i'm not suggesting you do it. it just don't breathe out your nose yeah. i did but, it with shay carl but, but talking hold it down. about what happens to a city when you don't fight for it you lose it yeah and and, and then some i mean what, would you describe san francisco as being lost or maybe something worse it's it's just it devolves into to satanism i lived there so. for a little while you guys ever lived there i've been there i've I've never lived there but i've passed through for periods of time and it wasn't as bad when i was there this was a long long time ago it was like but, 2015 for me it was and pretty to nice. be fair it's like what you're saying you have to keep fighting because the uh, i mean i hate to make this a left versus right thing they're not going to stop like i still get like i am shocked by how many door-to-door -door campaigners i would get in minnesota in areas that were safe blue right yeah. uh and the amount of messages you get from you know this is so and so from this campaign and you're like stop messaging me yeah. and you're still going to keep getting them and you're still going to keep getting because they never stop so if you're going to at least try to make a change how can you just say oh well this district is clearly blue why would i even try they're going to try they're going to go into those red districts and they're going to keep trying oh, whether it's through the educational system whether it's door-to-door -door campaigning sending you messages they will not stop it's cultural on every level so we can't you know again i hate making this a left versus right thing because i don't consider myself right. a republican or a democrat or any of that but you You're can't stop uh, there you go say so yeah, yeah. so uh, like you you have to at least be willing to fight for those what's the point you're just giving in yeah no i mean and these people are messing around they're not kidding around i mean i, th I think the whole three card monty manipulation is whoever the voters are now let's guilt them into voting democrat uh because republicans are racist and and while that takes place um we will we will use those wins to systematically go into uh, the communities at the grassroots educational school level and indoctrinate the next generation so that we won't even have to we won't even have to lie anymore we won't even have to manipulate them they'll believe the things we believe the three car monty is like that game where you have three cups with like a ball under it and four so, cards or whatever and so you're saying they're using the the black community as like a distraction and they're getting people to look away so that they the can move the card the holocaust and adolf hitler are the scapegoat and the justification for new world order Black people are the justification for authoritarianism, uh, authoritarian church of LGBTQ anti-human American politics. Same game. The, the, the same game. I, I, I got a question about this, yeah. right? That they, uh, some politician recently said in the past couple of years that the, for Democrats, the, the, the way to the black vote is through the church. And, and I've, you've heard that before, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm lie. just. Lie. But I'm wondering why. why 50% 50, 50 true. I get what they're saying, but it's a lie. But you constantly hear about these Democrats going to these black churches to get votes or whatever. And they say that, oh, it's because the churches have sway in the community. And then, but now... Overblown, I think. Right, right. Well, tell me about that. Why, why, where does I that think, trope come I from? Think the biggest, I think the biggest um, two things. One, it's through pop culture. It's, it's through the, the subtle, um, very uh, underhanded presentation of a white supremacy <clears throat> patriarchy. And that if you vote Republican, then that is the patriarchy. And so black people are just, but it's also the Republicans don't feel the need to clear that up. Right. They haven't felt the need <laughs> to clear that story up. And I get it. I mean, if they, it's it just not going to win the game. I was like Morgan Freeman. He was like, don't call me a black man. I'm not going to call you a white man. We're just men. Yeah. You well, with that, I mean, look, here's the thing with the, I, we can't, we, there's a very real 
from a biology standpoint, I, I don't like on the right when people say, well, well race isn't even real. Like race is only real, but okay, go to a state penitentiary and see how people group themselves out of self-defense and preservation. Race is real and people group themselves in certain ways based on how they look and, and like cultural values. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is when you give yourself the right to, to violate somebody else's uh, natural God-given inalienable human rights based on their race. There's nothing wrong to say, you're a, you're a, you're a mixed race, man. So, <laughs> but you, you look like, my, my grandmother looks whiter than you, by the way. She was Norwegian. But you're a white man, I'm a black man, and, and that's fine. It was interesting There's you said it was that. based on how they look and how their culture of values are, but not really about who their ancestors were. Right. It really, it's, it's, an it's that illusion of what see, they look see, but like. The, see, because the ancestor thing, once you get there, it all gets murky. Mm -hmm. Because what is white if you go ancestral? Yeah, we, Irish, we, we, Spanish, Italian. We, your your guy. Who who's the guy who came James. pick me up? No. Who? Oh, oh, uh, I don't know who picked you up. Uh, been Brian? Oh, Brian. 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 Yeah, Brian. my guy Brian. My guy Brian. He's in the front seat of the car. He's driving, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, I'm Italian." <laughs> yeah. And I go, "Huh?" It's amazing. I know. Right. But he was like, "But I joined the army in the German, and I was on a military base. So is he technically?" He's an Italian citizen. He's American. All I'm saying is that what is white gets murky. Black is different. I'll tell you why. Because black were you know, full swath brought over in a, in a transatlantic slave trade. And we lost our indigenous ties. But a lot of the white uh, immigrants that came to this country came with those cultural ethnic uh, heritages still intact. So... Yeah, I mean, it gets murky when you go to the ancestral place. I would say that if you look at communities, um, black blacks tend to be grouped in certain areas, but that's changing, there's gentrification. Um, but there's nothing wrong with saying that there's race. I, I don't like when people, the right sometimes has this boomerang effect where whatever the absurd cultural narrative is on the left, they just go opposite out of. That happened with the, the Florida Parental Rights and Education Bill. Yeah. I started seeing a bunch of conservatives Following, following the narrative of the left, the bill stopped teachers from saying, you know, teaching kids about being gay or whatever, yeah. which is just absolutely not true. The bill in no way stops teachers from walking up to a kid and saying these things. And I'm like, the the, the bill came out. It, there was a debate and amendments over it, and then the bill that was seeking to be passed had has says nothing to do about banning the word gay. It just says you can't have you know sex ed effectively for pre K to third grade. But the Democrats ran with this narrative because it was effective. And then I saw, I saw Republicans arguing that narrative. And I'm like, you, it's made up. You're not arguing anything. There's, there's, there's nothing there. Yeah. But they, they, they walk into these traps. Yeah. Well, and it's just, you know, it, it's part of its laziness, um, you know, and just intellectual laziness. And we built a society that makes it very hard to be a, a, a deep, critical thinker. Yeah. I like talking about the differences of genetics, of species, of people because of the ancestry. Like, that's fascinating to me that sickle cell anemia, for instance, was showing up more readily in like the black community in the yep. 60s or something because yep. of some genetic difference of genetics of ancestry. I don't know. But it's interesting to talk about with everybody, any race, color, in person of any language. It's interesting stuff. Like, it's good think, to know, too. I think the issue with, uh, Racism. We've, we've talked to a lot of people about it. The reason why it's it's very obviously rejected by most people, especially in modern times, is that, you know, if you have a guy from Somalia and a guy from, say, Haiti, they might both have dark skin, but be wildly different in terms yeah, of absolutely. their genetics. You know, right. one guy might be small, one might, might, might be tall. But then if you have laws or policy based on race, how do you actually determine someone? It sees them as the same person. Yeah, exactly. It's actually racist to do it that way, to see the Somali and the Haitian person as both being black or African. Well, that's American. exactly it. Because yeah. if, if, if you were to try and make an argument about like, well, the average height or it's like, well, I mean, some people from, you know, are black and short and some people are black and tall. Right. And so that's 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 the problem with race is that it, it really, really is superficial. Granted, I think uh, a conversation around. Well, it's superficial unless 30 million black babies are, are genocided at Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. over 60 years. You can talk about that. Well, you got a question that's, about. That's where race gets real, real for me. Um, so, you know, my, my, my point to my conservative Republican counterparts is to say, stop saying racism isn't real because you're giving these neoliberals an out. That's crazy because I thought it like, oh, yeah. I think of it as a class issue, but I think you're right that there was some serious racism going on by the Just people. Just look that, at the results. Well, wasn't that already proven? 30 million black babies at a Planned Parenthood. There'll be more babies to die at Planned Parenthood in the next two weeks than died in the Ukraine. Mm. Wow. Maybe not two weeks. Let's say a month, two months. When does... what? When does life begin? It's a tough one. I mean, at in, uh, at conception. That's what I'd say. Spiritually, I think. I think if we talk, look, you, you, 
I'm against, I'm anti-abortion. But we, we've, we've, we've put the law into motion and there's a trajectory that makes it hard to undo without potential unintended consequences. So I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say that 12 weeks is, I don't know what viable is. To me as a Christian, I'm just going to say that maybe the government shouldn't have the choice, but culturally, spiritually, and philosophically, for me personally, to have a black mother, a black grandmother, black sisters, that are, we failed as a black community, one, but we failed as an American culture that women would choose abortion. Mm -hmm. So there's two separate things to go on there, I think. One of the two most important questions that were asked to uh, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, what is a woman? She said she couldn't provide a definition. Yeah. And that to me is absolutely absurd. She was also asked- Then uh, it's not a celebration that she's become a Supreme Court justice at that point. But go ahead. The, the other question: If she, if was she about, doesn't know what a woman is, then yeah, why exactly. are we celebrating that a black right, woman is the right. Supreme oh, Court exactly, justice? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The other question was about when life begins. We need to have. We we need to, to the best of our abilities, try and quantify uh, the world around us so that we can create effective policy and help protect people and grant them civil rights. If we can't define a phrase, we can't protect it. I agree. So in the instance of abortion and um, what is a woman. The reason, in my opinion, the left won't give you a definition, they'll say, I don't, I don't know when life begins, maybe after birth or something. They have, they have no clearly defined point yeah. is because that way they can't do moral wrong. Right. Because if you say life begins at conception, it's a moral wrong at any point. Moral relativism. Yeah, that's, if, the, that's the linchpin of their whole ideology. Now they're saying after birth, and it's just like that way they can have late term abortions. They say, what is woman? Oh, I can't answer that because then you can have, you can, you can sort of massage various institutions in this country. I think it's it's easily defined in terms of what they're doing. If a judge can't tell you what a woman is, but then in the same meet in the same hearing with only a few minutes say Roe v. Wade is important, it protects a woman's right to terminate it's her pregnancy. It's completely absurd. You can't use the word woman in that sentence with when you can't even define what it is. See, but but what whenever it empowers well, yeah, them. Yeah, what what you're doing is you're debunking a logical fallacy, and you do it well. I watch you often. I'm a, I'm a secret oh, I fan. appreciate it, man. You're I'm, one of the best in the business at debunking the logical fallacies. I, I really enjoy it. But um, I'm just trying to understand. No, no, but there's you nothing. Know, tell me the rules. There, there are no rules. I know. That's the point. <laughs> Let's just say what it is. They, they don't care about the logic. Right. They don't care because the logic to, 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 to disavow yourself from the logos, which is a Christian idea, mm -hmm. right, the logos, mm -hmm. to disavow yourself and detach yourself from the logos is to give yourself carte blanche to apply morals and ethics however you see fit, when you see fit, advantageous in most cases for you to be cruel and predatory and, and immoral. And it, let's just draw a hard line. Uh, inception, at inception, if you abort a child, you- Conception. Conception, I'm sorry, yeah, conception. If you abort a child, you take the innocence of a child. Well, that's, the, that's a grave sin. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.